Hello, beautiful people. This is Dr. Dane. Welcome to this installment of the Tour of Consciousness. Some of you probably are like, dude, what happened? Did the tour bus like break down or something, bro? I know it's been a while. I've been doing stuff, you know, in this in this lockdown. It's like I've been able to run free and run naked throughout the world. Don't tell everybody. Shh, just between us. Just for us, just for fun. Never tell anyone. Okay, so what is the tool for today? Well, one of the things I've been uh, talking about while facilitating classes recently is image. <sighs> so I'm going to try to break this down for you. I'm going to try to do my best. Try to give you a little bit of freedom from trying to be what you thought you had to be, that you never were, that you're trying to prove that you are, so you can have people like you that don't actually like you and are in judgment of you anyway, so you try to not do what they might judge that you might be judged for, so you try to pretend that you're not something that is a judgeable offense, while believing you are a judgeable offense while never actually getting to like you. <sighs> it's called image. Okay, so what do we do? We create an image of us to be in the world, and an image that we hope makes it so people won't judge us or so they'll like us or so we can get what we want from them or have them give us what we want to get, which I think is the same thing. Get what we want, with the, yeah, same thing. Um, and the difficulty is when you function from image, you gotta be in a constant state of judgment of you. What is that like? Well, so for example, if you look at how you are with people close to you, well, let me give you two examples, okay? One is, think of if you have, if you're lucky enough to have, which I hope you do, one person in your life that doesn't judge you and doesn't think you should be any different than you are right now. Somebody who's just like, you're cool, I adore you. Yep, you got stuff, I got stuff. Um, none of us is perfect, but I adore you just the way you are. Think about what it's like to be around that person and how wonderful it is. How after just a few minutes, it feels like the weight of the world comes off of your shoulders. Why? Because you don't have to judge you in their presence. You get to be as weird, as wild, as wacky, as different as you are, and they're not gonna take, take it any particular way. And if you're having a really bad day, they don't judge you for it. If you're having a really good day, they don't judge you for it. They just get excited by it and drink it in and it contributes to them. Now let's think about most of the other people in your life. The people that you feel like you have to bend, fold, staple, and mutilate yourself to be around. And if you, what's actually going on there is, you're actually functioning from a constant state of judgment of you. Like, am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Am I dressed right? Am I, you know, am I going to say the wrong thing? Am I going to do the wrong thing? Am I going to burp inappropriately? Oh no, I farted. Oh no, shit, they're going to judge me. You know, okay. Maybe I didn't have to bring fart into this conversation. Sometimes I think I'm like a big six-year-old. Actually, most of the time I think, actually I know I'm kind of like a big six-year-old. But, so I mentioned farts. Okay, anyway. Um, but that's not something you can actually do if you're functioning from image because you'll say something like that and then you have to then go into a massive amount of judgment of you. So what we do is this image thing that we've been trying to portray has, is just a massive recipe for judgment. So let's take this a little bit further and look at this in you know, the day and age we live in right now. Look at social media. How many people out there are putting on an image? Like, I am this, and see how perfect my life is, and, and but who are you, who do you uh, gravitate towards? Who are you drawn to? Are you drawn to the people that are like, my life is so perfect, and I'm so beautiful, and I'm so sexy, and you should really want me? Or are you drawn to the people who are like, dude, I'm just living, I'm having a good time, I'm being me, uh, I'm not perfect, I got flaws, I got foibles, and, uh, I'm not going to make my whole life about my flaws and foibles, but I'm not going to hide them either. That's what happens when you don't have to function from image. So how many images are you using to create the attempted perfection of you you are choosing? And failing miserably, as we all do, because there's no way to be perfect. And you're like, what? I've been trying my whole life. I know, me too. That's the other part of this conversation is perfect. Everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So once again, what images are you using to create the attempted, to try to create the attempted perfection of you you are choosing? Everything that is times a gazillion, we destroy and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So what I really wanted to invite you to is just the awareness that this can exist, the awareness that most people function from that a lot of the time, especially now, because back in the day before all the social media and all that sort of stuff, it's like, yeah, you had your circle of friends and the people that you knew, 
And you may have had to hold, uphold an image for them, but now it seems like you have to uphold an image for the whole friggin' world. And so many people's value is based on how many likes do I have? How many people like me? Do they still like me today? They like me yesterday. Do they still like me today? But notice what that does. It's a constant state. It's a constant monkey mind of judgment. So everything you've done to give in to the monkey mind of judgment that is actually not yours, that is actually not you, and is actually not how you'd like to be, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So this conversation really is about recognizing that it exists. And then notice when you go into that sort of nonstop cycle of judgment of you and just stop. See a hand in front of you, see a stop sign, I don't know, see a squirrel painted red, whatever it takes for you, and just go, okay, I'm not going there right now. And you could, you know, if you know the access consciousness clearing statement, which you probably should if you've been on the tour of consciousness for a while, just go pock and pot all that shit. And it may not change at all, but what it'll do is it'll be a pattern interrupt. And then the pock and pod part goes back to wherever you started it in the first place because your choice to change it is what changes it. And it stops it, at least for the moment. Now, if it starts up again, just do it again. Stop, pock and pot all that shit or everything that allows it to exist. I now destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. <sighs> So there is a possibility of living beyond the need for image. And you know, what's interesting for me is, as I was growing up as a little kid, I crafted what I thought was the perfect image. And here's the weird part. One of the ways you'll know you have been functioning from image is if you um, have difficulty being around more than one person at a time and your judgment goes through the roof when you do, because what happens is you craft an image like this. Okay, so everybody sees me from here and sees me in this way. They see only what I wanna see about me. But if there's another person over here, you're like, I can't do two images at the same time because they might clash. So it's not wrong if you're doing this. Ooh, look at the, look, it's, speaking of image, I just turned orange. Maybe there's a lesson in here. Maybe there's an awareness. Hold on, I'm gonna, ooh, back to not orange. That was cool. Um, and so you'll know that you're doing it if, if when more people get around, you start getting more and more stressed because you can't put up enough facades that don't conflict with each other when you're around more people. But what I'm inviting you to, what I'm suggesting is a possibility, what I would like you to be able to have is a sense that you're pretty friggin' cool exactly as you are. You don't actually need an image for people to like you. And the other thing I'd like you to recognize is most of the people you see on social media that look like their life is perfect, it's because they continuously create a perfect image and only post that which is perfect. And um, none of us has a perfect life. There's a whole difference between that and somebody who is uh, not posting from their image, but posting from, hey, here's what I'm doing, here's what I'm up to, here's what's going on, here's what we can contribute to each other, let's go. So. Um, one more time, how many images are you using to try to create the perfection of you and fail miserably are you choosing? Everything that is times a gazillion, we destroy and create it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And by the way, you probably should not say fart in front of most other people. Just saying, I just learned that while making a video recently. <laughs> you know, maybe you want to watch it. It's all about image. You should check it out. It's going to be awesome. Now, the other thing about image is what it leads to is us trying to be perfect, but perfection does not exist except in a world of judgment. In a world where there is no judgment, perfection is not a necessity, it's not a requirement, and it actually doesn't exist. So if you could function from the place and space of no longer needing to judge you continuously, no longer wondering if you're perfect enough for people, how much more space would you have to just be you? And that doesn't mean that you take your dirty laundry and you air it in public just to prove how vulnerable you're being. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is just getting to be you and actually enjoy being you. So everything that doesn't like to enjoy being you, as weird as you are, as quirky as you are, as different as you are, as bizarre as you are, and realize that that is actually the gift to the world that you are, is that difference where you destroy and uncreate it, please. Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Let's just say it would be a very boring world indeed if none of us were different. And yet that's what we keep trying to create is us being like other people so we'll be liked. Well, the secret is when you actually start liking you, the approval of others becomes far less relevant. So what else is possible, my beautiful friends? 
what else is possible beyond image? And getting to actually be the being that you are, the persona of you, the you showing up in the world, as quirky, as different, and as much of a gift as you truly be. Thank you very much for watching the Tour of Consciousness. And if you look outside, check it out. Okay, so a lot of you know we had freeze here in Houston. And um, you know what's interesting is though the color of the leaves on many things have changed out there and some of the plants died because they froze and we covered a lot of them with, uh, you know, I guess little, little plant jackets. Yeah, we covered them up. Um, but everything else out there is going on still. Life and living continues in the world of nature, <laughs> no matter what nature throws at these plants. And it's just phenomenal to see. I adore you very much. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being part of the Tour of Consciousness. And what if you truly being you, beyond the need for image, perfection, and the judgment of you, are truly the gift, the change, and the possibility this world requires. And guess what? I got a class coming up. It's called Onward, Upward, Forward, or as I like to call it, the UFO class, even though if you go Onward, Upward, Forward, it sounds like the OOF class. But I like to call it the UFO class because I think we're going to take off into the uh, stratosphere, if not further. And uh, that comes on, that will be Thursday night, I believe. And a week from now, a week, yeah. You know what? There'll be a date somewhere because my brain don't figure that shit out. I adore you guys. See you soon. And come to the class. It'll be so much fun. Oh my goodness. I will talk about the image, but then we'll undo some stuff. And then you get free and I don't have to judge you. And you have way too much fun. And then you can be as stupid as I am sometimes. Okay. I adore you. Bye.